Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Talk with Swangili. If you're joining me for the first time, I'd love to give you a warm welcome to this family where we get to share different perspectives, different ideas and just information galore. So in this video today, I will be talking about the 20 things I learned when I published my book that is self-publishing, right? So before I formally published my book, I wrote my book and I looked at many different ways to publish and considered even doing the traditional route of publishing. So the traditional route of publishing means that you find um, maybe a renowned or um, a company that publishes book for you and basically that means that they do everything for you. So they other than writing a book of course so they edit your book they proofread your book they market your book and all those nitty-gritty things they do it so they handle that but of course at a fee so different codes are given for different books depending on the page uh the number of pages the type of cover book that you want and the design altogether of your book so after I published my first book, formerly on Kobo, I, I took about another two year, another year or so to write my other book. And recently, I realized that self-publishing is a goal, rather is a goal where you can earn an income, right? So my first book hasn't really earned me much income. And I will tell you more about it, about the income and how I got to get it to be published on Kobo and what are the deals. So here are some of the things that I've realized. So if you're publishing yourself, you are basically the most committed publisher one could ever ask for. Because you are doing the head. You are doing everything. You are the head of the marketing of your book. You are the person who decides, ultimately decides, how the cover book should look like you are basically editing it by yourself also what i found to be helpful was that you can get help from other people especially when you editing the book by yourself you're so accustomed to the words you even you know overlook the mistakes that you might make so as you are the head of you know the game basically you are the doing everything by yourself so your book doesn't have to kill you some people say that if you're going to write a book um it better be a, the most amazing book you can possibly write so they will say you rather committing a career suicide if you don't put you know every fiber of your being into your book right so people will say this because um somehow people are accustomed to traditionally published industries and it's in their best interest to treat the book publishing as some sacred act and fewer people write their first books that is so people write books for other people and it's called mostly um ghost writing so writing my second and third book turned out to be better than my first book one a book is not a book. <laughs> there are old ideas about what a book is, but much of these ideas are mostly um, smoke and mirrors, right? So from the 500 years old of pu publishing industry, they just edit ideas that they've gotten stale because few have questioned what a book is in today's world. I mean, a book in the, in the olden eras or in the previous generation, there was known as this traditional book with hundreds of pages and these days a book is being reinvented so a book could include 10 pages and be published on ebook and it can be regarded as a book so basically the definition of a book is reinvented and that's the first third thing that i've realized that i don't necessarily have to have about 500 pages to make a book i can easily make a book and publish it online having 10 pages and it would still be impactful or it would have 
20 pages and it'll still be impactful and convey the message that I want to convey, right? And the fourth thing is that each book is a learning experience. So before you publish a book, there is so much that one doesn't know. I've learned that from the first book that I've self-published, that there's so many things that I didn't know that I needed to learn. So each book is a learning experience. And also from the second and third book that I wrote, I realized that I've made so many mistakes from the first book. And that's why I treasure these experiences by doing it by myself, because over time, I get to hone my skills as a self-publisher. So it's better to publish a bunch of books, right? And learning a little more each time, you know, than to die with your first book still inside you. So just because you are trying to make it perfect, you know, um, you end up either not publishing the book or you end up, you know, having doubts about yourself and scrapping the book altogether or just the book stays in your mind or in your dreams or even in your draft in your laptop or whatever device that you use right so there are so many platforms or softwares um, that you can use to self-publish and one of the most renowned one is kindle but kindle um it's not that south african friendly because um what I realized about it is that you have there's so many requirements that are required and I will share them in my other video that I'll be talking about. So it's much more complex to publish formats aside from Kindle, but it is possible. I will share the different platforms that I have used in order to change the format to be suitable for an ebook. And, you know, um, it's it's also a bit difficult uh, to publish formats aside from Kindle and to publish on other distributions. So one has to make that 20% effort that will get you to the 80% of the results. You don't need to worry about making your first book available everywhere. Start with a platform that is available in your country or your continent, right? So for example, Kindle for me was not really that friendly. Um, they might have changed the requirements, but initially it was not friendly. Hence, I went with Kobo, right? Now, the fifth thing that I realized about um, self-publishing was that you don't have to launch all formats at once. Traditional publishing has the resources to launch every format at once. Um, so your the company of your choice that you, that you went with in um, or that you decided rather to go with for traditional publishing, what it will do that it will um, publish your book on ebook. It will publish your book um, traditionally that is um, a paper based or paperback based uh, traditional publishing. And also what it will do is that it would look at other different uh, distributions that it has, for example, Amazon or take a lot for example and they will do that for you but if you are doing it yourself it's you know it becomes a bit of a extra work in that it will be overwhelming to do everything at once so fifth thing you don't have to launch all formats at once you can either do ebook i've started with ebook and i'm currently working on a paper back book where people can um, access my book physically right so you can just do a launch at a time right uh, like i said i've published mine on kobo ebook and working on the paperback right and a few weeks later than that or a few months or so you can work on the audiobook and that is what i'm currently working on i'm currently working on publishing my first book which i've published via kobo um on for published uh, in an audio format rather, right? So this is a played long game and it is worth it at the end, especially if you don't overwork, if you don't want to overwork yourself or overwhelm yourself with all these different kinds of launches and formats, and formats right? So Kobo um, is just like an HTML document, technically, um, a Kobo book is no more different from a blog post, so to say. That is the 
simplest way that I can explain it. So you don't have to know the HTML to publish a Kindle book, but if you do, you have an advantage. And that is the sixth thing that I've learned while I was publishing my first book, right? And also writing the th two books that I'm yet to publish, right? So the seventh thing that one needs to learn, I'm making reference to Kobo because that is one platform that I've used and I found it to be very uh, user-friendly and it is also accessible in my country that is in South Africa. So the Kobo is paid is a paid web browser and what I like about the Kobo is that it also has an app, right? Many people don't read on the internet. So yeah, that's like popovers and annoying ads. Instead, they buy on their Kobo. And for example, I'm one of these people who buy on Kobo and read my book on that app, right? And then I have full access of that app. And you can subscribe and you have so many books to read for free and that's what I like about that right so if you are interested in getting your book published Kobo is one of the user-friendly app and web browser that I have a great experience and I enjoy it right and what I like about Kobo is that readers get a great reading experience while writers get paid for their work Okay, now the eighth thing to know is that you can publish a book as easily as you can publish a blog post. Once you figure out how to make an HTML document, you've got yourself a book. It only takes a few minutes to publish and it will be on sale on whatever platform that you choose within hours. The ninth thing that I've learned is that you can publish under any name you want. When you publish a book, you can put any name you want in the author field so for example it doesn't have to be under um your real name but it can be under an alter ego for example right so if you have an alter ego name you can use that right and you can publish your first book today so the 10th thing that i've learned is that you can publish your book anytime today tomorrow next week but if you're procrastinating on publishing a book just to write 500 words on literally anything go to amazon go to kobo go to all these different platforms that i will also make a video about and talk about and then just publish it under a made-up name you'll learn a lot just by going through the process and if you feel like you need to pro now publish a book with your own real name, you can delete your book from Amazon when you're done and publish it later on, right? Now, the 11th thing that you can do or that I've learned through writing the books and publishing my first book was that you can publish a paperback edition of your book for free. So how does this work? It costs nothing to create a paperback edition of your book if you can do it via Kindle book, but for my country, that's a bit tricky, create space or even sell direct book to bookstores, your book to the bookstores around the world, you know, with Ingram Spark. Your book only gets printed when somebody buys it. So that's what I realized. Initially, what I did was that I've approached different uh, printing companies or, you know, publishers and they've given me a code. But what I've realized when writing my second book and when I was looking for information on how to publish a book without having to break my bank account was that I realized that one can you use what is called in-demand prints. So what they do is that they only print a book um, when somebody buys it. So that saves you from the expenses and you just get instant profit. So those are the benefits of realizing that when you are a self-publisher, you can get instant profit by using the method of in-demand prints. People only, or the companies and institutions that you sign yourself up, um, they print only when the person buys a book, right? So the 12th thing, my other 12th thing, 
I think I'm on the 12th thing that I've learned when I need to publish my book. It's like you can only be um, on Kobo or on Kindle unlimited if your ebook is exclusive to Amazon, right? Um, Kindle Unlimited is like a Netflix for books. So as the author, you get paid by the number of pages read of your books. It's not necessarily a great royal to read, but in some genres such as Roman, science fiction, or erotica, that's the new genre that I've learned, by the way. There are a ton of readers in using Kindle, and some read a ton of books, right? The catch is that to be enrolled in the program, your ebook can only be on Amazon. Now, for South Africans, that's a bit tricky, once again, but one can work around that and once i really figure out how one does that i will make a video on it right so the second thing that i've run is i've learned is that um most of the publishing platforms they kind of forces you to price in a certain range right so you can't simply list your book uh on certain platforms for free so there so though there is a rather complicated way to do a perma free book and you know kindle i know has unlimited uh kindle unlimited rather allows you to you to offer your book for free for limited periods so i know with other platforms as well it does that so it allows you to uh list your book for a few days or a week for free and the minimum price would be for example 120 rand 30 rand and then you keep the 35 percent of sale up to you know a certain amount right and um with candle i think you keep about 70 percent of the sale and with Kobe as well it's around that percentage right so the fourth thing that i've learned is that the e book platforms are getting more powerful right and one of the ways to go about um using this to one's advantage is that build an email list right it's amazing that you can publish to millions of active readers on these different platforms rather and um once you have generated that list or once you've built up that list you know every time you publish a book you inform other people who were interested in some of your books or your first books or your second book that you have published a, a book and the minute they're interested they buy the books right so once i realized that it is building a, a, a an email list is rather beneficial not necessarily uh, short term, but also in the long run. So, wow, the 14th thing that I've learned is to build an email list as an author. And even if you are not necessarily um, into publishing books, but, you know, publishing uh, blogs, um, I had a blog website and I wish i knew this because then i know that other people would be informed when i publish a blog post and they would read my blogs right and the 15th thing number 15 right the 15th thing that i've learned was that categories or genres matter right it is a, it, it is quite tempting or it can be quite tempting to write a book that can't be cut around categorized right but you'd be setting yourself up for failure and that's what i've noticed my book did not necessarily have a gender initially and what i did was that i went back to kobo and i edited the stuff because i noticed that the minute the book has a gender it attracts people so before you write a book or whilst you're writing a book just spend some time and browsing the various categories on the different p platforms for publishing and see which um, category your book will be listed on or which category categories are relevant 
to your book, right? And now there's this thing called the CEO, right? Um, the search engine, it's mostly the holy grail of selling in online platforms and it is the quickest and easiest ways to sell more and get your book in front of an audience. This is what I didn't realize before and this is what I'm mostly learning um, on YouTube as well, that the CEO is the holy grail and it is important when you want to sell um, your content or either your book and one once one has learned about this um you get to you know be the person who gets more people to read your book or to view your content or to listen to your content or rather to you have more audience right and another thing that i've learned is that you should know your book sales potential before you write so while you are browsing different categories you get a feel of the revenue um within that category you know um <laughs> how i visualize things i mostly visualize them in numbers so i get to say okay if the my book is then is within this category then my revenue uh, for this number of books is likely to be this much or my revenue within the next six months is likely to be this much and this helps me in that one gets to use such sales rank to estimate how many copies one will be selling or is selling at the time right so another thing that i've learned and i've learned this through youtube was that it is important to use keywords, right? The more views people get is mostly through keying in the right key, uh, keywords rather and also by word of mouth. So same as books. Books sell by keywords or word of mouth. I'm one particular person who doesn't necessarily like to advertise um, my work and I've realized that I'm not doing myself justice by doing that and this is what I'm learning to do. I usually hide behind, oh, I'm an introvert and, you know, I'm not necessarily the person who wants to approach people about a certain thing. But with keywords as well on YouTube, I've learned that, okay, they generate more views. And I realized that uh, through keywords, I've gained more views in other, vid in other videos than others because I've managed to somehow get the keywords right and that's what i've learned is to get the keywords right when i'm publishing my book in different platforms and there are different um strategies for doing that so you can try to invent an idea that spreads throughout the collective consciousness you know either subtle art of not um yeah like it's just that art it's i don't know how to express this but um let us look at, for example, the book of this book called The Sub Art, Art of Not Giving, uh, you know, or The War of Art, or um, there's this book by Kaya Lala. Um, uh, the, 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 the name of it, I'll just try it and put the name on the description below, but I think. Um, it's the likes for me or it's the post for me something along those lines i forgot about it and i've just recently read it but i forgot the title but anyway it's mostly about the keywords that one uses and it can be a bit harder but it's literally a strategy that will help one sell tons of book so i've learned that one can choose you know either to mix the keywords or have a greater strategy of of putting those keywords so that it can attract more audience and another thing that i've learned i think this is the second last now um you can have you know key phrases associated with your book so aside from the title you can have several key phrases associated with the book and your back end key phrases also affect um 
the CEO um, of your book in different uh, platforms. So you can associate up to, I think about seven key phrases for your book. And if you want um, to, key phrases that are relevant to your book that have enough volume to sell some copies and don't have so much volume that it's hard to compete. I don't know if that makes sense. So what I'm trying to say that is you can have up to about seven key phrases and you can try to um, mix them up in a way that will be relevant to your book. So you can, you know, create um, or browse um, key phrases that are associated with the book. And then when you publish them on the different platforms, you can choose some of the path to go with right so yeah and the last thing is that and this really applies to me is that i realize that ego will hold you back from publishing it's tempting to think of your book as being a big deal and you know i've learned that books can take years and years to, to to be published but your ego or your fear of being out there can really deprive you the opportunities of people hearing your voice and that's what i've realized that I've, my doubts and ego have really um deprived me the opportunities to share um to the world about the different ideas and what really goes <laughs> through my mind and the different stories that I really think that they will be very impactful in people's life. So there is really no doubt that I have a lot to learn about publishing and marketing books, but I've learned um, more, you know, within the short period of time, within the two years than you know, the 10 years that it could have taken me to to learn these things. And yeah, I hope that this will be helpful. And tell me how your journey has been with self-publishing and what are some of the things that you've learned throughout. I guess this is a video where we can learn from each other and gain insights. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.